inspiration is some is like a lightning strike and it comes whenever it wants and creativity is for me like the the log that i throw in the little fire the little spark the lightning created mm. so i always have to you know make sure i have enough logs and in um these times when you don't have time that might be a time to chop up some wood so i have it stored up whenever it hits me Because also like the hard part is to let the small fire burst from the lightning die out because sometimes you have to let them die out uh, because you don't have time and you have to be wise and pick and choose. That's a little bit what creativity is for me. It's, it's a little bit of, of a work, but the, the reward of it is also uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. To get hit by inspiration, you do your work, you throw in your logs and the reward is inspiration comes back to you like a you know mm -hmm. and to see other people enjoy it is also very rewarding to be here. Yeah. Greetings and welcome back to Cobweb Cottage. We would like to invite you to the Woodland Library Art Studio because I have some new art prints that I would like to show you and even some new original artwork. We also can't wait to show you some creative projects that we were a part of recently and we'll talk about that a little later on. And we also want to talk about a little bit from our hearts about how to stay inspired when you're not feeling so creative and when you're just feeling a little run down in life. So we thought that was something we wanted to talk about too in this video. So in case you are new here, my name is Jonas. And I'm Lindsay. And this is It's a Charming Life. And we would love for you to subscribe and join the Cozy Cottage Club if you haven't already. And make yourself a cup of tea and let's have a cozy chat. Cheers. I always take winter as an opportunity to clean out my old uh, art projects and uh, cataloging my ideas and uh, really prepare for the creativity that is about to come when spring pops. And I find it very refreshing and healthy to once in a while just clean out and go through old art projects and um, maybe retire some of them. Because living in a small space, it can be very overwhelming sometimes, especially if you are in the creative field of work. As an artist, it can be really hard sometimes to look at old unfinished art projects. But this year I was really excited to finish up old works and also give room for all the new ideas that come into my mind. But living as an artist, you always have to be ready to jump on the unexpected opportunities that comes your way. So every year during fall I am working as a professional pumpkin carver for a production company in New York. It's a very busy time for me and I'm always very thankful for the more slower season at least in the beginning of the year, mm. leading up to summer. But this year I got unexpectedly contacted by them and they wanted to have me on board for the new Halloween event. <laughs> because every day is Halloween in Sleepy Hollow. Exactly. <laughs> so it's been a really great opportunity and uh, uh, I'm so thankful for being a part of the team. But 
it also created a lot of stress uh, to not be able to do my own art projects that I wanted to do. Um, so that's been some of the th things that I've been dealing with. And that's why you haven't seen as much of me as I had hoped. What do you have here? <laughs> so this uh, pumpkin studio is a very exciting place. It's, so the majority of my work there is to create uh, original jack-o'-lantern faces. And uh, we are talking thousands of them. And I must admit that it some days have a stretch on someone's sanity. Because, I mean, how many faces can you, can you do that does not start to look like the other? But it's been really fun and, and I, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. It's a fun project to be a part of. And I'm, I'm so excited to share it with you later this fall. So I have to ask you, how do you come up with all the different faces? I don't understand how you could come home from the studio and tell me that you did a couple hundred different jack-o'-lantern faces. The key is sometimes to not just not think about it. <laughs> it is to start. If you start with an eye, you make another eye, you make some expressions and uh, voila. Yeah. Actually, I, I feel like I go a lot about how I feel at the moment uh, while carving it. So, so a lot of different emotions and, and now <laughs> when, when yeah when when going through them and assemble like electricity in in them uh, I recognize each face and what, can remember what mood you were in <laughs> yeah the mood and, and like oh that day this was when I was so tired <laughs> oh this was a Monday you know <laughs> a Monday face <laughs> uh, it's it's quite fun mm -hmm. and I just want to mention that. We have shared a lot of behind the scenes uh, on Patreon. Like they have seen a lot of uh, pumpkin faces mm -hmm. and uh, funny content. Because a lot of very interesting things happen at the pumpkin studio sometimes. Yeah, and one day is not, not similar to the other. Mm -hmm. So Lindsay, uh, when I've been away on this project, what do, do you think has been the most challenging aspects of, of doing creating content? Well, it's been challenging because we're such a team, so... Yeah. <laughs> cottage team. The cottage team. Everything we do with our videos is usually such a collaborative process mm. that I was having to take on a little bit more of. Normally we're writing our scripts together and planning all the shots together, what we want to film, the stories we want to tell. So it's been a little challenging to keep the ball rolling with all of that when I've had to take a little bit more of that on. I don't know if you've noticed that our content has kind of shifted a little bit recently. I've been kind of coming to the forefront a little bit more in the videos lately and <laughs> it feels kind of weird sometimes. Well, because you're so beautiful. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. And of course, our main priority is that we take time to be together as a couple and spend time together when the camera's not rolling and we're not talking about filming and projects. And now I got the opportunity to join you at the Pumpkin Studio. <laughs> yeah. So that is another curveball that came our way, but it's really fun. I've started to help out a little bit there. And as the, this project uh, reaching an end, we, we needed some extra hands and that's where you were the perfect <laughs> choice. So now we are getting to work alongside each other again, but not at the cottage at the pumpkin studio instead. Yeah, you just have to be um, ready to uh, to improvise and mm -hmm. like uh, adapt our content around whatever opportunities are happening. Yeah, that's a part of being uh, in the creative realm. Mm -hmm. So all these changes have been nice in some ways, but it has definitely left us feeling a little bit creatively burnt out and uninspired because everything isn't as flowing as well as it used to and we're pretty exhausted by the end of the day. I think these schedule changes have shown us that we have to make some changes to the systems that we had in place before mm. so that we don't burn ourselves into the ground. I think you and I are a bit of perfectionists, so we really put everything of ourselves into videos and artwork, but sometimes you just Gotta be okay with how it is. One part of of this sort of work is to sometimes just lose the control and be okay with it and and just uh, ride the wind a little. Kind of let go of the projects you 
had your heart yeah. set on. Eventually, you you finish the whole circle, so mm -hmm. so to speak. Of course, everyone wants complete control, mm. but uh, it it can be a big learning curve to. Um, and I feel you grow a little bit as a artist as well to just put yourself in in these situations. You realize that you're capable a little bit more of things yeah. you didn't realize before. Mm -hmm. And it does put your personal work into a new light. So we wanted to share with you a podcast interview that we were able to be a part of recently. It's for the Create to Heal podcast, and we were so grateful that they wanted to interview us. And they asked their guests the questions of what is creativity to them and what is healing to them. So at that point is when all of these different schedule changes were happening for us. And we really wanted to do the interview, but I have to admit that we were both a little afraid to answer these questions because at the moment we were feeling so uninspired. <laughs> But just having the conversation with the two co-hosts sparked so much of our creativity again. So I realized it's so important to talk to other creatives about that feeling. Especially for, for me, who at that time had, hadn't even touched a, a brush for, for like a month, two months maybe. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I felt so afraid to even say something <laughs> like, here am I trying to give some positive, uh, a positive message to other artists and creatives. However, I feel like um, it became a somehow a, a little success there. Actually, once we started speaking from our hearts, it just started to flow. And thanks to the gentle, kind feedback from the co-host, it just they made us feel so warm and welcome. It's very natural to feel uninspired once in a while, and that doesn't mean that who you are have have changed or mm -hmm. your purpose in life have changed. Definitely, a lot of the hard things in your life are what you know inspire your creativity the most. Sometimes, or mm. they go hand in hand. That you really, as creative people, you know, usually we're kind of doing self therapy. <laughs> I mm. feel like, um, at least for me, I know I make our videos in a very relaxing way because. I deal with a lot of anxiety myself. And for example, the pumpkin faces, maybe you carving faces of your inner frustration out, did that help you in some way? Sometimes it, yeah. it does because <laughs> it feels like I um, put all my, um, if I'm tired a morning, I make uh, some kind of tired pumpkins mm -hmm. and I, p I put my tiredness in the, in the pumpkin. It, it's going to be admired later when it's lit up it will look amazing hopefully <laughs> and uh, people will get a spark of joy from, from it so we thought it was important to mention that we get burnout sometimes and the creativity doesn't always flow that well but i found that just by having other people to talk to about it just helps so much so that's why we wanted to open up here in case anyone else is feeling like that we would love to hear how you keep sparking your creativity when things aren't going exactly how you want. And please feel free to listen to the podcast, the Create to Heal podcast. So let's share some art updates. I have a lot of new prints to show and even some originals. So in the beginning of this year, I wanted to do some changes uh, in my Etsy shop and I wanted to uh, find um, another sort of paper. I wanted people to get this original feeling more when they hold a print and that's why I've been looking around and, and I've actually struggled a lot to find the, uh, a printer that, um, that I'm happy with for that aspect. So being a small independent artist has its challenges sometimes and one of the challenges I have felt is the ability to be as sustainable as I want to be usually costs a lot to, to do that change. So a new change for me is 
that I'm gonna print my art on bamboo paper. And it's a good, high quality, very well known brand um, that is sustainable and, uh, and it's the same kind of quality that you see in art galleries, in fine art galleries. And I'm so pleased with the test prints I've seen and also get the, the same satisfaction as, as I get holding the original. And I feel like it's a big step up uh, in, in quality. Yeah. And uh, I'm really it, happy for you because yeah. I know it's been really disappointing many times, different test prints you've tried out. It's been a lot of trial and error with test prints. These bamboo prints are just so great that they're more sustainable and they truly capture your artwork yeah. in the best way I've seen so far. Yeah, and it feels like the right move and I'm so excited to, to show you guys. Yeah. So the big update on the paper quality will come with a little bit of, of change during the shipping part. Mm -hmm. It's going to be printed at the, the special um, professional art gallery printer place. That was a long word, <laughs> but you, you get my, you get what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have the size. I mean, those printers are so big, so so we can't uh, fit it in the cottage yeah. probably. Can't uh, a lot of things in the cottage. Yeah. So the the art prints is gonna be printed and shipped directly from the printer from now on. But uh, when it comes to our postcards, it's still gonna be sent from the cottage. For now, yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to original artwork, uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, I have uh, some new things coming up in my shop, in my original shop on the woodlandlibrary.com. It is tea bag dishes and uh, I'm so excited for these kind of hobbit holes. Yeah. But when you drink your tea, the best thing you can have is a hobbit hole because mm -hmm. it's the best companion you have in the best place for second breakfast for a second breakfast <laughs> or a second cup of tea yes and another original that i right now offer in my shop is this original painting of the owl in the bookshelf <laughs> and i think that's adorable combination because <laughs> you know owls and books I don't know any more perfect combination Definitely. and it gives a very cottagey cozy uh, atmosphere that that I love yeah I like that you're offering some original cottagecore artwork with the hobbit village and then some dark academia with the owl and the books the combination can really go wrong. I, <laughs> I know. You're you're great at both of those things. So if you are interested to purchase an original, please go to the woodlandlibrary.com and sign up to my newsletter because there is where I will post any updates about upcoming art collections and releases. And to really kick off the release of my new art prints, I'm gonna have a Friday the thirteenth sale which is this weekend only. It's halfway to Halloween, so we thought Friday the 13th would be a fun day to have a little sale. Yeah. We're going to get 13% off. You can get, yeah, 13% off with the code FRIDAY13. You don't offer sales too often, because it can be hard as a small business owner, but we really wanted to say thank you to you all for supporting our you know content, Jonas's artwork, and all the things that we do, and our Patreon supporters. We're so grateful to be able to do what we're doing right now. 
mm. because there wasn't always a time that we could be creative pretty much full time and we're so incredibly grateful to be able to do that so and your support means so so much to us and so we wanted to give back with the sale so to conclude this cozy chat with you all about creativity we wanted to share one more cool project we got to be a part of and that was with create magazine who kindly reached out to us to do a little interview with and i absolutely love the title they came up with of creating a charming life with lindsay and jonas isn't that sweet the magazine is made um, by artists for artists a contemporary art magazine and i really like how she started out at the beginning of the article have you ever wished you had more space resources or time to start living your dream i believe at some point all of us use this excuse to procrastinate and wait for conditions to be perfect to truly live life to the fullest and she goes on from there to say that that's kind of how she stumbled upon our youtube channel mm. which led to this interview that sounds like to me like a sad serendipity moment definitely yeah, our cross paths at a really perfect time. I don't know, it's really crazy to see our faces spread out on a magazine page. So we were asked some really nice questions about it's a charming life and cottage life and Sleepy Hollow, but one question I wanted to read our answer to was, what would you say is the role of art and creativity in your lives? And we would really love to hear your response to this too. Creativity fuels our passions in everything we do from Jonas's artwork to Lindsay's styling. We are born storytellers and we love expressing our tales through video, writing, painting, and photography. We are happy we have created something that has room for all those elements, either combined or one by one. For us, the basic role of art is to give the viewer a sense of connection with a subject, something that is an extra bridge from the viewer's eyes to the heart, something that makes what we create feel more close and special than just something to aesthetically admire. It is that invisible piece of feeling that is art for us, and that piece is what we try to channel into our content, whether it is video, writing, painting, or photography. So thank you, Create Magazine, for having us in your beautiful magazine. So thank you so much for staying with us and being a part of this cozy chat. And if you have creative ideas, but maybe feel like you don't have the space for it, or perhaps going through a challenging time, time-wise, I would like to encourage you to uh, never let go of your dream. And don't wait for a bigger space, because if, if we had, we probably would wait forever. <laughs> yeah. If your art inspires you, it will inspire the world. Oh, oh that's very sweet. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I think about your artwork. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's what I think of your artwork. <laughs> so never give up. Never give up. Dreams come true. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and join the Cozy Cottage Club. So thank you once again for all of your amazing support. And we hope you enjoyed this cozy chat. And we'll see you in another one soon. Bye for now. Bye for now.